I'm going to take you for a, a drive down to Kotakia Beach. Uh, it's early morning here. I've uh, got back from Kolak yesterday after a 10 hour drive, so I'm feeling quite stiff from sitting in the car. So we'll take a little drive and uh, have a walk along the beach, get some fresh air. Cab. Morning, how are you? Very well. Beautiful day again. Mm. Well, the tide's out. Not much water there. Here we are at the beautiful Kautakia Beach. Haven't been here for about a month. This is my normal daily routine. I walk uh, here most mornings normally do about an hour minimum just over there the headland I normally walk, sometimes walk there it's about an hour and a half to walk there hour and a half to walk back but it's a bit late in the morning now for that it's, uh, it's something you do about six in the morning when the sun's just coming up because it gets very hot when it gets to around about eight o'clock you may be wondering why I, uh, I drove down here it's only a five minute walk but I prefer to, I don't like walking on concrete uh, well, I prefer getting here and then walking along the beach and uh, walking down that long concrete road so I'm back here now, I'm back in uh, my hometown Kotakiab still got some plans to make, not sure what I'm going to do with the uh, YouTube channel because of Covid, it's still quite bad here in Thailand compared to the rest of the world it's not so bad but uh, wherever you are it's uh, it's a concern when you uh, want to travel so I'm making some plans I had some big plans uh, for the channel but hoping that Covid was gonna disappear from here quite quickly but uh, as I said unfortunately it's a little bit up in the air at the moment and to travel uh, it puts restrictions on where you can go what you can do uh, the film content it's nice to be able to just go out and film whatever you want but it's, it's disappointing when you drive somewhere for an hour to show uh, a, a beautiful national park or uh, a temple or a, um, a place of, of significance and uh, you find that there's a sign outside saying um, closed because of Covid so I'm not sure when I'll start my next venture but for the next month or until unless Covid is relaxed in the next few weeks for the next month I'm gonna spend a month showing you around the beautiful area here of Hua Hin and then uh, if Covid disappears by then I'm gonna let you know later on in the month uh, what my next plans are it's all changed I've only been away a month but they've put down some some sort of barrier here this little thing with the orange floats on it 
This wasn't here a month ago. I'll have to find out what's going on there. Looks like they've maybe boarded it off for for swimming. Maybe it's a protected area, but there's no never been a problem with sharks or anything uh, like that here. If anyone's been hurt because of what's under the, the ocean, I'll find out today. Nice fishing boat out there. Beautiful morning for it. That big uh, rock sitting there, looking like the Rock of Gibraltar. That's uh, a temple is on the other side of that, uh, halfway up the rock. I'll take you there probably tomorrow. You can have a look at that. That's called Monkey Temple, the same similar to, uh, as I told you about in uh, Kolak. There's monkey temples in many places in Thailand, but. Uh, this here, it's got thousands of monkeys uh, living there. So we'll go there tomorrow. Up ahead here, where you see all those rocks and the, the little the lighthouse thing at the end of it. Um, that is the, the ferry from here in Huahin to Pattaya over there. Oh, it was. Uh, it stopped uh, operating about uh, a year ago at least when uh, COVID came. So that's not operating anymore. Hopefully it won't be too long before it comes back and starts again. I only ever took that ferry once. I went across there, but uh, it's quite expensive because of... Uh, it's, you know, you can get a bus there for a lot cheaper. You can get a bus there for maybe a couple of hundred baht to Pattaya but the ferry was 1,200 one way and that was just for oh, one person uh, it's not a car ferry it's just a uh, a ferry for um, people not cars so it's, I found it quite expensive two and a half thousand for a round trip uh, it takes around about two hours to get across there. Uh, I can do an hour and a half ferry from uh, Donsak Pier to Koh Samui with the car and one person for 550 baht. So half the price with a car and uh, it's, it's just for me it was too expensive. I'd rather spend the money when I get there. I'd rather spend a few extra hours traveling if I go by bus or if I go by car. Uh, it's better for me I, if I save 700 baht. That's my accommodation for one night rather than giving it to some ferry operator who wants to overcharge for their ferry. They're still setting up here. I, I only got back last night, so I'm not sure if the um, licensing laws have changed. Perhaps they're allowed to sell drinks on the beach here now. They can in Huahin, uh, sorry, in Koh Samui and Phuket, and they did in uh, Koh Lak as well. Um, but this is a red zone at the moment. It's got quite a lot of people with COVID, so they're trying to restrict people from going out and not trying to tempt them by letting the bars open and restaurants serve alcohol so I might come down here later for for dinner perhaps and I can talk to the man in this one this is where I normally go I can ask him a few questions about what's been going on why have they got this floats and uh, can I buy a beer please <laughs> ready cab you I've been away for a while. I, I live here, but uh, you like uh, in, in here in um, Samui? Can you get by beer now, or is it? Is it? Yeah, it's okay now. No, they they stop uh, the uh, the problem. Yeah, for the for the guy, for the guy, beside. Oh, in a, in a cup. Yeah, so still can't ah, start. Okay. The ball, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. I'll come back later. Okay, pal.
Yeah, so I think what he said was, he didn't speak very good English yet, so I, the, the gist of it was to me uh, that I can buy a beer there, but it's going to be in a coffee cup. So as to, uh, if the police come walking along the beach, which they sometimes do, um, they see you drinking coffee, not beer, and they'll leave you alone. So the, we've caught some Mui and Phuket, they've opened up more now because they're an island and uh, they've, re they've been able to reduce the, the problem because they can stop people coming on the island, they can monitor them when they're on the island. When you drive somewhere from Bangkok to somewhere like here in Hua Hin, you've got no way of knowing where the people are going, what they're doing, and uh, that spreads the COVID. I think that's why it's uh, so bad in Hua Hin and Pattaya. Those people from Bangkok, they tend to like to get away out the city for the weekends and if they've got it, if they have, do have COVID, uh, they bring it with them, but maybe unintentionally, maybe they don't have no symptoms, but uh, they come and they go out and mix with people and spread it. Whereas in uh, Samui, where I've just come from, it's controlled. Uh, you, you, when you land in Samui and get off the ferry, or if you fly, get off the aeroplane, um, there's a massive paperwork to fill in to ensure that you don't have COVID and that you are regulated all the time. You're there for 14 days, you're regulated, and they um, can keep tabs on you and where you are, what you're doing, to make sure. Um, it's not Big Brother, it's this, this is it, in this day and age, um, you have to rule, have different rules. Uh, obviously they impinge on your liberties a little bit sometimes, but what can you do? This is all new to, to the world, nothing's happened like this in the modern world before. So we'll head back now to the condo and uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, when I got home yesterday I looked at the in my cupboard and in my fridge and of course being away for a month there was nothing there I'd used everything up before I left so today I'm having to go shopping so we'll go to Tesco Lotus which is the main shop in Thailand for supermarket, something like your Walmart in America or uh, Sainsbury's in England, Coles in Australia. Well, Thailand has Tesco Lotus and Big C. They're the main shopping centers. There's no Big C here in Hua Hin, which I'm quite, I've always been quite surprised about because it's a big city. Uh, but there is uh, a large Tesco Lotus. They also have mini Tesco Lotuses and mini Big C's, which are like more like 7 Eleven. But we'll drive back now and then we'll head for. nothing in there for me to eat in the, in the condo so what I'll do I'll go and get some breakfast in my favorite little shop in Hawaiian it's got an English menu it's an English owned Oops. stop here a little bit soy dogs there come up yep. Yeah, so it's an English or British uh, shop. They sell a traditional British breakfast, of pie and chips and fish and chips, that sort of thing, as well as some Thai food. But it also sells. Uh, ah, sweaty cap! It also sells um, tin food from the UK. Uh, 
and good bacon and sausages not not your hot dog sausages that you get in Thailand they tend to palm off as in an English breakfast you get proper sausages that are made here in uh, Thailand by a company that knows what to put in the sausage to make it taste good so we'll head back there and then uh, get something to eat because I'm starving here we are at uh, Nanny's Cafe this is the one I told you about where you get a breakfast for 99 baht pretty good breakfast I'm gonna go and eat and starving but, uh, very good shop it's been here for many years English owner married to a Thai lady and he's still doing well, the, uh, even with um, COVID, he seems to, uh, the few British people that live here do tend to uh, come and have breakfast or buy their food from them when they need it because it's uh, not many places you can get British food in uh, Hua Hin Bangkok different um, maybe one or two places here but this is the best for me, I always come here good service, nice people and good prices here we are at Nanny's Cafe. Um, they sell um, lots of British food, things that I'm used to from at home, um, but at very um, inflated prices. And that's not because the owner is trying to rip you off, it's the tax that you pay. Uh, unfortunately, the Thai government put a massive tax on anything that's imported into the country. And that goes whether it's food or cars or anything that you bring into the country is, um, is massively taxed. Uh, here, for instance, uh, we've got fridges full of British foods. You buy a uh, lamb shoulder for 420 uh, baht a kilo. Um, you've got ox flank, strip loin. 489 a kilo got, but that's all a bit expensive um, but I, I, I buy sausages from here um, I can buy a gammon steak for 90, 95 baht a uh, kilo but it's the sausages and bacon I come here for normally because they're British sausages or they're made here but they're a British standard recipe they're always good and a um, packet of these sausages here they cost me 500 grams pork bangers of sausage they cost me 135 baht uh, for 500 grams and bacon this is the bacon I'll get I'll get it on the way out so it's heat frozen this is bacon the same thing 135 baht for 100 500 grams, sorry. And for some reason, streaky bacon is a little bit more expensive. But I don't know why streaky would be more expensive than the, the middle cut, but there you go. They also do uh, fine line pies. You can get your steak and kidney, your steak and mushroom. Minced beef and onion. Um, steak and ale. 75 baht. Yeah, that always makes a nice dinner. Pie and chips, pie and mash. Frozen peas. Cheese is very expensive here too. As I say, not their fault. Uh, they import it from Australia, the UK, Germany, wherever. There's a up to 200% tax on it. Now, I'm not mean. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not tight when it comes to money. But I don't like being ripped off um, by anyone, whether it's a person or, or a government. Uh, so I, I tend to look for the bargains when I come here. I still want the cheese. I still want the bacon. I still want everything. So I can eat some Farang food as well as Thai food 
um, but I they normally have a little bargain section. I don't think they've got it today, but I'll just look around the shop. You see here, um, a tin of peas and carrots. Um, 75 baht, three dollars. Um, HP sauce, 115 baht, it's about five dollars. So everything's expensive, but if you're craving for some food from home, um, it's worth it. I, I suppose the way I look at it is if I save on Thai food when I go out and buy 50 baht noodles, then I can splurge a little bit when I fancy something from my homeland. So this is Danny's breakfast special um, you get all this for 95 baht one egg one hash brown some beans English sausage bacon toast jam grilled tomato and orange juice or you can have coffee this is big enough breakfast for me um, you can spend 159 baht and get two eggs, two sausage, two bacon, two ice cream. Don't more or less double it up for an extra 60 baht. But as I say, a 99 baht breakfast for me is is more than more than enough to get me through most of the day. Market Village. This is um, one of the, well, it's the biggest shopping centre in Huahin and the most popular. There's another one called uh, Blueport. So that's more your upmarket designer type shop. Then this is your everyday shopping place to, to come. Um, Blueport's doing very bad because it's designer, there's no money around, so <laughs> there's a lot of shops closed. I'll take you there tomorrow when I do a little bit of a tour of Hua Hin and uh, you can see for yourself. Yeah, my, uh, even here, Market Village is, 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 is a lot of shops have closed down due to COVID, um, but hopefully that should change in the near future. Still a lot of people going inside now. It's quite busy. It seems busier than last time I was here a month ago. If you look around, if you see all these helmets and uh, people have left bags on their motorbikes and their helmets on their motorbikes, and uh, I can't imagine me doing that in my hometown of Middlesbrough or any town, even in Australia, I, could, I wouldn't be able to do this. Um, it would get stolen. Um, I leave a helmet on a motorbike in Middlesbrough and within an hour it would be for sale on eBay or Craigslist or somewhere like that. <laughs> uh, but the Thai people are very honest, the old lady just leaves her, her raincoat there, four helmets there, something you wouldn't see. Um, and you have to sign in here. Oh, he's not even taking any notice, so I won't bother signing in. I'll just get my temperature took. Oh, 36.6. Still no COVID. That's good. Okay, this is uh, the food court. Um, they sell everything from teppanyaki Japanese food, uh, fried chicken, 
juices, fresh juices, carrot juice, mango juice. Um, so this side is um, where they make like sort of stir fries and noodle soup and uh, all different oriental foods, mainly Thai. But there's also some that do uh, Farang food, European food. All at excellent prices, as you see. Korean pork. Oh, Korean. Pork, yeah. Yakisoba, 45 baht. Uh, Korean pork and rice, 50 baht. Salted fish, rice with teriyaki sauce, 60 baht. That's Korean. This is Thai. Red noodle soup with red pork, 45 baht. This is seafood here. Squid. Spicy tom yum soup, 60 baht. So, really good foods, good prices. You can live very cheaply. You can uh, come here and get breakfast for 60 baht. Uh, go to the market and get some noodles and some pork or vegetables if you're vegetarian for lunch. So, 50 baht and maybe splurge for dinner and spend 250 baht. But if you did that, you've still only spent. 360 baht, $12, $13 maybe uh, on food for the day. So work that out over a week. That's less than $100 a week to eat. You couldn't do that at home by buying the food from a supermarket. But you can come out here and get it all cooked for you um, at a very good price. This area of the, oh, all areas of the shopping centre don't open till 10.30 on a morning. That's why it's all blocked off there. Only staff going down there. Um, but the food court is open from 8.30. And um, the supermarket, Tesco Lotus supermarket is open from uh, 8.30 as well. So you can still come here and do your shopping. And if you want to do any market shopping like this, you can go after 10.30. Uh, so I'll take you upstairs now and you can see um, Tesco Lotus. We we'll go there and do my food shopping because I'm desperate. Because oh my God, nothing. I've never seen my pantry and fridge so empty as it is, to, is now but we're going to put that right Lots of gold shops around as well. Everywhere you go, there's gold shops. Thai people love their gold. Even in this day and age, when they don't have much money, they, I think they'd rather buy a piece of gold than they would eat. A lot of them. Okay, I'll get my trolley and I'll go and show you some uh, prices and how much it costs to shop here and feed yourself. I'll get 
my shopping list. I'll just get the essentials today. I'll bring the car down later and uh, another time and get you um, a larger shop. But I'll just get enough food to last me a little while now. Oh look here, there's a discount. I always look for discounts wherever I go because uh, even if I don't need it now, I'll buy it and uh, it saves me money later. As I say, I'm not a mean person, but um, if I can save money, I will, because if I save money on some things, it gives me more money to spend on other things, like travel and seeing the country. Oh, they look nice, Ferro Rocha. 70% off. Oh, still three. Oh, no, no, not 70% off this one. That's 349. A bit rich for me. Luxury tiramisu biscuits, 59 baht. Mm -hmm. No, nothing here today. But maybe clothes. That's another thing. I buy clothes when I see them. I don't wait till I need them. I buy them when they're on special. Because I can get them for 50% off. Uh, as I say, that saves me a lot of money later. If I wait till I do need them, then I'm going to spend a lot more money um, buying them. I'd better buy them now when they're cheap. That one there, what's that? That's reduced from 249 baht to 170, 30% off. I don't need long trousers, I hardly ever wear long trousers here. Yeah, 30% off most of these. But nothing's caught my eye yet. Oh, 70% off. Look at that. A nice pair of trousers. 50 baht, reduced from 199 baht. So 50 baht, that's $2. $2 for a pair of trousers. Not bad. Shame I don't wear long trousers though. Not bad for $2. What's this? Oh, it's a lady's shirt. No, not there. But unbelievable, very cheap. Mayonnaise, 310 mil, I think it is. Oh, that's been reduced. 60 baht for a 60 baht for a thousand island dressing. That's quite nice, but I make my own. I don't need anything from this aisle. What you will find is that the shops here are a lot smaller than the supermarkets, are a lot smaller than um, you find in Western countries or most Western countries. Oh, I need some washing up liquid. Let's get that first. It's over this way, I think. Yes. Up here. Started off all wrong. Plenty of time today though. No rush. I just get the home brand. Which is here. So dishwashing liquid, I've got a bottle at home. So a 400 ml 8 bath. That's all I need in the cleaning stuff. I've got washing powder. I've got disinfectant. I've got everything I need in the clean. Oh no, I haven't. I need some bleach for cleaning. Now that's 22 baht for 600 mil. Barbecue sauce. So 
something special. Oh, that's all right, 92 baht. It's a bit expensive, but it goes a long way. I, I normally add um, stuff to it uh, to make it a little bit more tasty. So that bottle will last me a month at least. That was uh, 92 baht for a bottle of barbecue sauce, which is around about $3. Or maybe closer to four dollars, but it's as I said before, it's, it's imported anything imported, anything European, or from USA or most countries, Japan. Um, they put that massive tax on it, so probably have that 92 baht. Uh, the government are gonna get 60 of it. oil any herbs spices no. I've got coconut milk didn't open that one now these here are very good these are chicken stock and pork stock um, like your oxo cubes um, but you get some really good ones I use this one this is uh, for Tom Yum, when I make Tom Yum. I don't buy all the bits and pieces and make it up by adding the herbs and spices. I buy these, these are cubes. And you get six stock cubes, which makes six portions of Tom Yum. And they're only 20 baht. And you can get different ones for different Thai foods, or different ones. I can't tell you some of them what they are. That's Tom Yum. Uh, what's this one? Sometimes they're written in English, sometimes they're not. No, that doesn't tell me. It's, it's pork something or other. If you look at the picture, it's some sort of pork broth. But they've got lots of things like that, lots of flavourings to make your authentic Thai food. But I tend to eat European food at home more, and when I go out, I eat Thai food. But I do every now and again fancy a Tom Yum or a... Um, other, you know, maybe green curry or red curry. Okay, okay. I need some yogurts. There we go. These are my yogurts. Look at all special. 56 for them ones. 58. I always like the. I normally get the coconut one. I like coconut. That's 58 for four. Oh look, 52 for four. I put these back. Well, that saved me six baht. Natural cocoa. Natural coconut. start to get a little bit expensive orange juice is three dollars or apple juice is 75 baht three dollars again um, I tend to drink water I don't get much fruit juice I think we have beef this will show you how expensive things are that small this isn't I thought it was fillet steak it's not it's oyster blade that's 275 baht for that little bit of beef. Uh, that's nearly ten dollars. And two lamb chops, 405 baht, sixteen dollars. So as I say, anything imported, that's Australian lamb. Um, but then you come over this side, and you've got very cheap food, the normal Thai. Food 65 baht for chicken breast a kilo, 63 baht for chicken legs. Um, it's something that always makes me laugh. Same price uh, over there for uh, chicken breast, and you you get chicken feet for 65 baht a kilo. So you can buy 65. 
baht's worth of chicken feet uh, for the same price as chicken breast. So I, I never understand that. I don't eat chicken feet. I've eaten them a couple of times, but just bone and gristle. Um, the Thais love it, and that's why the price is higher. Um, we've got some beautiful pork there. Um, pork loin. Uh, that's 145 baht a kilo, which is around about six dollars a kilo for pork loin. And pork mince is round about. Well, it's not round about. It is this week 135 baht a kilo. Fillet, nice pork fillets there. They're 184 baht a kilo. Is that uh, $7 a kilo for pork fillet? But it's funny, you know, a lot of times it's the it's the cheaper cuts of meat that are more expensive than the, or in Europe. Uh, you know, your cheap cheaper cuts of meat like liver and offal is very cheap, but here some reason it's more expensive than the, the good cuts of meat like your chicken breast or your um, pork fillets. Quite often pork mince is more expensive than pork loin. It doesn't make sense if you've got a mincer at home, you buy the pork loin and get some really nice um, pork minced up um, less than the price of the mince that's got a load of fat and gristle in it. Cheaper from it's been minced from cheaper cuts of meat. So yeah, I, sometimes I, I, I can't understand why prices are what they are. This side here is the this is always this little area here is where you can find your bargains. They're trying to sell them off quick because they're getting close to use by. It's nice ginger there for ten baht. Um, obviously, getting get close to use by date, you're gonna have to use them quick. But that, they're half price, 11 baht for spring onions. Um, lettuce there for 22 baht. Corn on the cob, 11 baht. Looks okay, looks quite fresh. I'm not in the market for that today. Lots of different mushrooms here. All different types. There's these long stem ones up there. And then you got these ones which I normally get. They're only 14 baht for a little tub. And you got your big ones. The Thai people tend to like these, especially in Tom Yum. They like their big chunky mushrooms. They're 39 baht. There's two, four, six, eight of them in there. 39 baht. And you can get all these ones, I don't know what these are called, but they're only 22 baht for all them mushrooms. So if you're a vegetarian, some broccoli, 65 baht. Doesn't look too fresh actually, I don't think I'll bother with that. 65 baht. I need some pumpkin though. Oh, I do need potatoes. 33 baht a kilo of potatoes. So, I'll get my little bags and do some fresh shopping. Tomatoes, 45 baht a kilo. I only need three or four. I can come back down any time and I don't like to get too many because I don't like to waste them if they start to go chop. Cucumber for 39 baht. I'll buy one of them. See what have you got in the vegetable and green section? Not a lot I need here. That's the problem when I have someone staying with me and do a lot of shopping and make it worthwhile. But it, cooking by myself, it's not worth it sometimes. Sometimes it's cheaper to go out to eat than it is to cook at home. 
30 eggs for 99 baht, 30 eggs for 4 dollars. This is quite good, you get your salad bar here. 25 baht for, or 250 baht a kilo. You put them in little tubs. See over there, in little tubs. You get small ones, big ones, but they then wait for you and you pay 25 baht. A dollar uh, for 400, uh, 250 grams, four dollars a kilo uh, for a nice salad. And then you've got all your seafood here, summer treat um, if it's local fish. And then you've got whole fish there, 94 baht a kilo. It doesn't say what it is in English, but uh, 69 a kilo, 79 a kilo. Thai people like their fish whole, they cook it whole and they cook it with the, um, the scales on and then they peel the flesh or uh, the, the skin and the, the, the scales off when they start to eat the white flesh inside. Um, prawns are normally very cheap. There you go, uh, 249 baht a kilo, so that's what, uh, $9 a kilo for fairly big prawns what else they've got not doing very well here, not seeing anything I need I say I'm, I'm not sure, I don't want to buy too much, I might just decide to go somewhere in a few days, I mean, yeah, that's what happens, quite often happens sat at home and think, oh sod it, I'll go to Chiang Mai <laughs> and then all that food I've got, I have to give to the, the guys, or the ladies who clean the condos and clean the, I just hand it to them on my way out at, at the security gate, more potatoes, when I take these home I'll show you how much they cost, when I take them, unpack them, like that. I'll get a carrot in case I make a tom yum, I only get one. 24 baht a kilo. It's different from when I used to be living back in Australia with family, you know, and the shopping trolley was full. And the pill was enormous. But now living alone, it's like one carrot. <laughs> sad, isn't it? <laughs> Very sad. But sad life. And some pumpkin. So it's only 14 baht a kilo. Pumpkin. That looks good. Six. I don't know. It doesn't look too good. That piece. Six baht. That one looks alright. Seven baht for a nice big piece of pumpkin. I've got eggs. I don't know what state they're in. Might have to come back when I've tested them. Should have tested them before I left. I need some fruit. I need cabbage. You no. Know. I do need some fruit, I want some mangoes, here we go. Look at these, 29 baht a kilo. They're not ripe, but you take, I take them home and I'll uh, leave them on top of the fridge. It only takes a few days, they'll be ripe. So I try and get one semi ripe, which will ripen up more quicker, that looks quite semi. And then I get some real green ones, so that they just sit on the fridge and take time to ripen. Then we get mangoes and a pineapple if I can find a decent one. Ah, there we are. There we go. There's the pineapple. 29 baht each. I don't want that looks like a goodie. I don't want to take this with me. Take that off. Uh, 29 baht for a pineapple. That's round about. Dollars fifty. Easy, 
these are mandarins. Now, I know they look green, you'd think they were going to be sour, but they're not. When I first bought them, when I first came here, I thought, oh, well, they only bought one. I thought I'll try it, thinking it would be green and sour, but it was very sweet. That's the way they come. They're 45 baht a kilo, that's less than $2 a kilo, so I'll get a few of them. Looks a good one. I'll get six. I don't buy apples very much because that's another, most of them are imported. They're not normally, uh, in, they're not here in Thailand, they're not grown very much locally. Um, they're 65 baht for four, 48 baht for four. And then you've got your bigger bags here, 69 baht, that's not too bad, 69 baht for half a dozen, that's like three dozen, three, three dollars, or half a dozen apples, 95 baht for a bigger bag, there's probably a dozen in there for four dollars, but I'm not a big apple eater anyway, and bananas, I, they're always quite good, they're 28 baht here for a little bag but I normally stop at a market on the way home and pick up that type of fruit. Here's my trolley. Oh, there it is. Okay. What you do then is you take them over and you get them weighed. And they put the price on them. Oh, these are nice. 39 baht a kilo. These are... Um, they're not... Uh, um, like, you know, what do you call them? Um, um, the, um, what are these called? Uh, what are these? What are they called? My uh, name? Lambertang. Lambertang? Yeah. Okay, come. I'll get some Lambadang. I'll get one of that, half of them for a dollar. I like my fruit. Alright, about halfway there. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, I'll show you how much alcohol costs. So we've got a vod vodka there, 400 baht, $16 for a bottle of vodka. Um, beers are very cheap here if you buy the local beer, your Singers and Chang and Leo. But if you buy imported beers, um, they're going to be more expensive, obviously. Um, Part of 12 large Changs is 589 baht. But here, yeah, this is where it's quite soul destroying. <laughs> Uh, the wine, it's very expensive wine, um, because it's imported. Um, if you get the bigger one, like this one, I might get one today actually. Uh, Italian, uh, this is 669 baht, which is uh, 20 odd dollars. But it's, uh, it's two litres I think it is. How much is it? Uh, I'm not sure. Somewhere, I suppose. 
I think it's two litres. So two litres for 20 odd dollars, that's as good as you're going to get. But the problem is, if, as you, if you want an ice bottle of wine, um, this one here, 459, that's French. Um, so that's for eight, 12, 16, about $18 a bottle. Um, 5.59 a bottle and then you get your cheaper ones Australian ones but these are really rough I've, I've drank them in Australia and they're very cheap they're very rough but uh, that's 359 for a 750 mil so I'm better off buying a two litre of Italian wine but yeah uh, wines are very expensive special occasions for me now Six hundred and seventy-five for a Jacob's Creek. That's uh, six four. About twenty-five dollars for a bottle. I would pay in Australia. I'd probably pay twelve dollars. From memory, that's from a couple of years ago. But uh, I think I can get a decent bottle of wine in Australia for around about twelve dollars. Where you pay at least double that here. And this is the, the cheap one. This is the Thai whiskey. Um, they drink a lot of that here. Um, got a bottle of Hong Thong, it's 139 baht. Uh, that's for about five dollars, just under about five dollars for a small bottle. A big bottle is around about ten dollars for a bottle of Hong Thong Thai whiskey. Very popular here, Thai whiskey. And we'll go around this way. Cereal. Another thing that's very expensive because imported. Uh, they don't make cereal here. But if they do, it's quite rubbishy. So we've got cocoa pops here, 81 baht for a small box. Probably get about five breakfasts out of that. So five breakfasts of 81. That's like 15 baht for breakfast. It's. Mm. I can go down and get fully cooked breakfast for 99 baht with coffee. Uh, with coffee. But I like to have some cereal at home, so I'll just get a small cornflakes. That'll do me for maybe a week. And that's 50, 52 baht for 150 grams. A small cornflakes is two dollars. Potato chips, 20 baht for a normal small packet, which is about a dollar. Well, that's similar to what you pay in European countries, I think. I haven't visited Europe or Australia for you know, close to two years now. I'm um, a bit out of touch with prices. I'm sure they've gone up a lot with COVID. Um, I need some biscuits. I like to have some sweet at home sometimes. Here's my things I normally use. Yeah, we'll get everything around. Uh, I get some of these, these are nice. These are like the Euro cakes, they've got inside like a custard and they're 50 baht, two dollars and you get, I think you get about a dozen inside. Yeah, I think you get 12 little Euro cakes they're called, different flavours. Oh, I like the green one actually, i get the green one, that's uh, pandan. This is a good one. It's, pandan is a, a Thai fruit, so I'll get the pandan. Or tropical, why not? And a pack of biscuits. Oh, choco pie. I'll get this instead. I get choco pie 37 baht. Oh, I think there's six of them in there. That's my sweet for the, the week. And that's about it. I don't need any toothpaste or soap or shampoo well, that was I left that home when I went away for the month 
got all that still in there. Have a quick look at the clothes, give you an idea how much they cost. A pair of shorts, 350 baht. You can get, pick up t-shirts around about 100 baht if you shop around. Uh, this one is 300 baht, but then you go over here. Quality is not the same, but that's 100, 100 baht, 109 baht for something like that. Quite nice, a little bit thin, but what can you expect for $4? Um, a few washes, it's probably not going to be much good. But at that price, they're more or less disposable anyway. So I'll just check my list. Didn't get much. I think I'll put back down. I've lost interest. <laughs> uh, barbecue sauce, burn white, sweet chili. I'll get that later. Oil. I'll get some uh, some bread when I come out of here. Some French bread from the bakery. Noodles. Now I don't need bacon. Okay. That's more or less it. I don't think I. I just wanted a bit of fresh food. Some salad. Some fruit. Some cornflakes. I've got a little bit in the freezer, I've got some pork, loin, and I've got some chicken. I might get some shrimp. I'll make a tom yum. No. no. Yeah, if I want one I'll go out and do a restaurant and get a tom yum and it'll probably be just the same price as me making it anyway. Okay, we'll go and pay for these. So we don't um we don't give you plastic bags here anymore, which is good for the environment. Not so good if you're out shopping and you forget to bring a bag with you. Uh, but they don't give you plastic bags anymore, so I brought my own bag. You can buy bags here. Uh, 20, oh, a few baht, two, three baht, five baht. It's a... Ready, Cab? Oh, I'll just give you my bag. Discount. And I normally pay these. One one hundred fifty seven. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah, I fix. I fix when I get outside. Gap, gap. Thai bad. I pay by credit card. Uh, normally, if I keep my money in Australia, a lot of my pensions kept there, so I pay by credit card for lots of things. But they give you the choice of paying in Thai bad or Australian dollars. I always pick Thai bad. I think you get the better exchange rate. I may be wrong. Captain Cap. Ready, Cap. Sorry? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, it's totally 1,157 baht. Yes. Okay, you pass this way, right? Okay. Just one minute. Uh, your receipt, get this cow. This one, 290 baht. Oh, you I, get this cow from your receipt. I chef. I got you many chef. knives. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you chef. Oh. Yeah, I got plenty oh, of knives. So I don't need really, knives. Oh, another one. <laughs> no. Nah, 1,000 baht. No, nah, I don't need anything. Uh, Thank okay. you.
So this is where I buy my bread from. Um, you get freshly baked bread. It's a Japanese bakery. But the bread is excellent. Um, 45 baht for a French stick, which is about two dollars. And I like these little cob breads. These are always good. And that's only 30, 30 baht for a, a cob. That's all I get here. I don't buy anything else. They've got lots of things like um, donuts and cream buns, croissants, cream cornets, sandwiches. But this is all I get. Nice and warm. Just been baked. Thank you. Come cup. Thank you. That's the crazy thing. They don't give you bags in. Let's go look because the government says that they've got to stop giving bags away but then you go to a small shop like this and they give you two bags for a, loaf of, a small loaf of bread <laughs> crazy well we're back uh, from the shops hot day out there bloody hot um glad to be back uh, I, I didn't do a lot of shopping i thought i was going to get a big shop but i changed my mind and i thought i'll just get a little shop and uh, top up again later in the week but i've got enough fruit and veg to last me probably a week and i've got a lot of food still in the freezer from before I went away so I didn't buy any meat or any fish or any seafood or anything like that but the bill came to 1157 baht but 669 baht of that was for a bottle of wine so nearly half of it was on wine so um, I don't often buy it but I thought I'll treat myself so, apart from that all this food here came to around about 500 baht, I think it's 488 baht for the actual food component. And I've got plenty of uh, vegetables and salad uh, to go with the meat I have in the freezer to make meals up. But plenty of fruit, I've got watermelons, some of these little mandarins, some mangoes, and some of these things which I can't remember the name of. Um, but they're very nice, they've got like a nut in the middle of them. Uh, and. Uh, you open up the shell. When I eat them, I'll open them up and I'll show you. Then I got four yogurts for my breakfast for four days, which I'll have with a cereal. Um, I forgot the milk, so I have to go to 7-Eleven and get some milk. I got a pineapple and some barbecue sauce, some washing up liquid, some sweet things, and a fancy little snack. Um, oh, I got a packet of chips. Uh, so all that was, well, you're on about twenty dollars, which is you can't beat that. So that should do me at least for four or five days, and I'll go back shopping then. But it gives you an idea. This gives you an idea of what it costs to live here. If you want European foods, and if you want um, uh, you, you know the things you can get back home, they're going to cost you more. Um, but if you go for your fruit and your veggies and your meat, as I said, you know, meat is very cheap here. As long as it's your normal cuts of meat, as long as it's your um, chicken breast, and uh, unless it's chicken feet, and then, you, then you're gonna, you've got a price to pay. Um, but if it's chicken breast, pork, loin, uh, prawns, um, fish, fish is very cheap. You can get a whole fish for 60 baht a kilo, $3 a kilo. Um, so yeah you can eat very cheaply here i find that it's sometimes cheaper to eat out than it is for me to cook at home which seems very strange but i can go out and i can get uh i can go somewhere like a place that i'd love to go that's bankum po which is i'll take you there later this week um it's a place where they have music on every night and uh, there's like a lot of uh, food vendors and you can go and pick what type of food you want. There's some European, but mainly Thai food, but very, very cheap food and very, very 
a cheap drink so I'll take you there later on in the week but yeah sometimes it's cheaper to go out which is unbelievable but it's true uh, whereas if you go out in Australia um, it's going to cost you more than staying home and cooking a steak or cooking a piece of chicken here I can go out and get something for 50 baht um, two dollars and I can eat well uh, but it would cost me a lot more than that sometimes if I cook uh, some noodles and a piece of chicken and some vegetables and you know it is it, it, it's uh, it's amazing but yeah it's, it's it's cheaper for you to go out but the problem is when you go out you tend to spend more because you think oh well, I'm out I'll have a beer or I'll, I'll do this or I'll go there um, so in the end it end up kind of end up costing you more